Okay, so we are going to be discussing Plot Mountain today. And Plot Mountain is a way that we can understand the structure of a story or how a story is written. You guys probably have heard some of the different components to um, a, a Plot Mountain before. And so, Ms. Maddie. And so, um, we'll go ahead and go over each of the elements and kind of describe what each of them are. And then you're going to use the sign of the beaver to try and figure out the different areas of the, the plot mountain for sign of beaver. So, for the first part of a story, it's kind of like when you climb a mountain, do you start at the top? No. Yes. No, you don't start at the top. There's not like a helicopter that drops you off and they're like, okay, hike down and then up this mountain again. Yes. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't fun. make sense. Have a fun. So, with a story plot, you've got the beginning, sort of the middle is the climax, and then the end is your solution, your, your conclusion. You've talked about the beginning, middle, and the end of a story before. We know how to identify that, right? We know how to identify those parts. Now we're getting into it a little bit more deeply. The beginning of a story is where we do the background knowledge. We meet the characters. We get to know the setting. And we get to know who the people are and what their motivations are. So, do you remember when, with your legend, I asked you to set up the setting and I asked you to describe the setting? This is kind of what we're talking about. You're giving background knowledge. What does the reader need to know about the different um, parts of the story, the different characters in the story? Okay? So, um, that's where you start is with the background knowledge that the reader has to get. You will quite often see the author setting up the setting of a story instead of going right into this is what the character is like and this is what they think and this is why they do the things they do. They quite often will set up your time period first. Okay, for example, go ahead and look in the side of the beaver. Go ahead and open it up. Very first sentence. Matt stood at the edge of the clearing for some time after his father had gone out of sight among the trees. Where do we, right away, very first sentence, know where Matt is? What kind of information did we get? Right in the very first sentence, what kind of information do we get, Daria? That he was near trees. What else? What else? What other information did we get in that very first sentence, Ava? He was in a clearing. He was in a clearing, yep. So he's in a clearing that's surrounded by trees, which makes you imagine something like that, Hana. He's alone. Avery? He's probably in the forest. He's probably in the forest. We're making that I, that assumption. Did you also find out the character's name? Yeah. Matt stood at the edge of the clearing for some time after his father had gone out of sight among the trees. We learned that there are two characters, at least, Matt and his father. In the very first sentence. Okay, we don't need a pencil. Addy, we don't need a pencil. Not yet. Okay? You guys are setting up the story right away. Inside of Beaver, they're giving you information right away. Background information. Now, the next part we're going to look at is actually the climax. What is the climax in a story? Yes, Ava. The problem, like, what's the, like the biggest thing that happens in it, kind of? Yes. In some stories, it's the biggest event that happens. The hugest part that you're like, whoa, everything just kind of started coming together. If there's a problem in the story, this is where the, the problem is, um, is, is kind of discovered, where you're like, oh, this is kind of happening. So in Restart, what would be the problem in Restart? Um, Connor. Chase gets amnesia. Chase gets amnesia. Doesn't remember stuff. Where is the climax in Restart, would you say? How about you guys put down your pencils because no one has been asked to write currently. And I've already told several people to put their pencils down. Evan, what's the climax would you say? Mr. Solway's Lost Metal. Mr. Solway's Lost Metal because what is that kind of trigger? What kind of problem is presented then? It triggers how Chase, how Okay. The amnesia plays into the story because Chase doesn't remember that he's the actual one that stole the medal. His amnesia is part of that. Does the reader kind of figure it out, though? Aha, uh -huh. we start thinking, oh my gosh, here's the problem. 
the missing metal is gone, and Chase has stolen it, and Chase doesn't remember it. My goodness, that's a great part, or that's a great climax. Now, is the climax always in the middle of the story? No. No, if you think about it, we kind of took some time to build up. There's some rising action to that point. What kinds of things happen between um, Chase getting amnesia and the, the solely metal? What kinds of things happen, David? I was going to say, like, one of the, like, antonyms of climax. Oh, okay. We're, we're talking about something else, though. Thank you, though. Yes, Ava. Um, when Ben takes school to Max's um, gun and stuff. Wait, wait, no, no, no. We're talking about restart. Oh. With, Mr. With the climax being Mr. Solway's medal. Here, I'll write that down so you can remember. Mr. Solway's medal. You're right, though. We're kind of jumping between stories, so I'm sorry. Um, like, maybe when... He likes he went to school for the first time and like everyone's okay. giving him weird looks. Yes, weird looks um, from everyone. No one remembers, or I should say, everyone remembers who he is, and they don't know how to treat him because he's different than he was beforehand. Avery, what else? What other things happen in in uh, restart that kind of led to Mr. Solway's medal? When like Chase started making friends with people that he used to, that like used to despise them. Like, yeah. Chase made new friends. That caused a little bit of a problem with his old friends, right? Okay. Jalen? Going to places that he didn't like to go to Going to um like places that he didn't like to like that. What was what they call it's Portland Street. What did they call the old folks' home? Nursing. No, nursing. It was Portland Street. Center. Community Center? Yeah. Community no. Service. No, but what was, they called it the Geezer Motel. Oh. Going to the Geezer Motel. Okay. okay. All right, anything else? Yes, Sydney. Um, they, um, they are Hey, Bear and Aaron have a big conversation about does he really have amnesia? Does he remember this? He has the medal. Is he going to put up the goods? Michael. Bear and Aaron what? Bear and Aaron blame him for hitting a door in the head. I think we already found out about Mr. Solway's medal at that point. Remember, that's that's after they find out about it. We're looking for stuff that leads up to Mr. Solway's medal. Um, one more thing. Avery. When um, Chase is coming back onto the roof and finds the uh, medal under his roof. Okay, but that happens after his medal is missing, right? So that's not a rising action. We've got we've got to think of things that happen up to this point. Jalen? Uh, that was after they found out about Mr. Solway's medal. Okay. Is that the conversation that they had though, where it was like, "Hey, man." Oh, oh no, no, no! Remember, Chase talks to them and says, "I know you stole it," and they're like, "We didn't steal it. You stole it." And that's when we find out. So that was actually afterward. Evan? Uh, so Shoshana dumps ice cream all over. Yeah, Shoshana dumps ice cream on Chase. Shosh? Dumps ice cream. Daria, last thing. Shosh, we find out about Joel and what Chase did to Shosh. Yes. Joel and what Chase did. Okay. So we have a lot of rising actions here that kind of lead. Please put all four of your chairs legs on the floor. Okay. We have lots of actions that kind of led up to this climax. Those are the rising actions. Those are the main events leading up to the problem. Now, once we get to the climax part, Mr. Solway's medal, we then start resolving the problem. This is where we find out how big the problem is. Now we're going to have the falling action where we start solving the problem. Where were my friends that were just saying some things about? So, Jalen, what was one of the things you said? Um, 
went to shout out, went yes. to that house and got attacked by the dog. Okay, so Chase gets attacked by the dog. Okay. What other things? Now remember, this is how we're settling Mr. Solway's medal. Yes, Avery. When Chase finds the medal, it goes back to Portland Street to give him. Yes. Chase finds the medal and goes back to Portland Street to return it. Yes, that's a big part of it. Daria. So that would be the climax part where he finds the empty container and he realizes the metal's been stolen. So that would be finding the container, the empty container. That is the climax. Because he realizes, oh my gosh, Aaron and Bear must have stolen it. Michael, what's another falling action? I hope you're paying attention, guys, because you're going to do this for Simon Beaver. Uh, I think there's like a, a tiny bit of another climax because uh, Chase gets sentenced sent to court. Okay. Can there be multiple climaxes in a story? Yes. Yes, there can. There can. So what we do is we try and limit our, our um, climax to one specific moment. That's one of the reasons why I was saying, hmm, do some of these things pertain to Mr. Solway and, and the metal? Yes. Mm, some of them may not. You want to be specific about the things that help the plot along. You want to be specific about the, the things like, um, Shoshana dumps ice cream on him. Does that have anything to do with Mr. Solway's metal? No. So really, does that belong on our rising action? No. no, it did happen in the story, but does it have anything to do with Mr. Solway's medal? No. So when you're doing your rising and falling actions, make it specific to what the climax is. There might be multiple climaxes in a story. There might be. You just want to try and figure out what pertains to that one. So Sydney, what's another piece of falling action? Warrior. Warrior, the video warrior, the showing of warrior. Why does that pertain to Mr. Solway's medal? Why does that pertain to Mr. Solis' medal? Because it's about what he did. What he did to receive the medal, yes. Marinda? Um, also, like, um, oh, yeah. Like, when, they, when he found it, it was going to the place, and then when Aaron, I can't remember, they, like, attacked him with the vacuum. Okay. Aaron and Bear attack him for the medal. Aaron and Bear attack Chase for the medal. That was a big part. Yes, the big fight. Julius. Chase, Chase going to court. To court. Okay, why does Chase going to court? Oh my God, I have to speak, please. Chase going to court, why does that have to do with Mr. Solway's medal? It has to go with Solway's medal because, you know, because, you know, he's going to court because he found, because he found out that he was the one who stole Solway's medal. Okay, so Chase had to go to court because he admitted that he stole the medal, didn't he? He admitted and he said, look, I'm the one who stole it. And the nurse said, it's out of my hands, I need to call the police. Okay, we have a lot of good falling actions here. The only thing I would suggest is, are these in order? No. When you do your rising and falling actions, put them in order of the way the story happens. So, we should have done what first? Is the Chase getting attacked by the dog, does that have anything to do with Mr. Solway's medal, really? No. No, so we could probably take that one off. Okay, so we have Chase finds the medal, goes back to Portland Street, showing Warrior, Aaron and Bear attack Chase, and Chase goes to court. The only thing I think is a little bit out of place is this one. First. And that is first. first, I believe. So I would list this one first because it happened right after the climax, didn't it? So as you're going up, you want your events to go in order of the story, getting to the climax, and then your falling actions should be the same. What is the solution? Or how is the problem of Mr. Solway's medal solved? How is that solved? Jalen? Uh, Mr. Solway saying that he gave the um, 
Metal glove. Look. Mr. Solway says he loaned his medal to Jake. Yes. Mr. Solway busted into the courtroom and said, No, I gave it to him. I let him use it. You cannot put him in jail. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. I'm the oh, man. Okay. So, basically, in a nutshell, when you're talking about the structure of a story, you start out with the setting. You start out with a big event. Then you start climbing to the most important part or where the, the problem is finally revealed. Can you have your climax closer to the beginning? Can you have the problem introduced right away? Yes. You can. You can. Sometimes that happens. This is a basic outline. What I would like you to do, you and your partner are going to go ahead and do this on your lined paper. So you're going to want to draw a little bit of a, a plot mountain on your paper. I want you to list several items for the rising action, the falling action, have something for the climax, and then background knowledge and solution. I want you to have something for each of them for the sign of the beaver. Okay? I want you guys to come up with it. You guys have about 15 minutes to work on it. All right, you meet again.